Welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to a video that is about who your friends are. I'm going to go through every single sign as I do and I'm just going to give you a mini reading as to how I see who your friends are. And I wanted to do this topic because the last few client sessions that I've done, everybody has asked about how do I meet more of my soul tribe people. That's what people want at the moment. So that has been a running theme across, I think, the last maybe four or five sessions I've done. And because we're going to have Mercury here in Gemini, I'm going to hit record on this. So we've got Mercury in Gemini from the 14th of June to the 28th of June. <clears throat> I basically thought, let's take a look let's take a look at the soul tribe thing the friends and the methodology that we're going to use today is we're going to take a look at now let's have a look here we're going to have a look at the ascendant lord and that's where i'll talk a bit about you and what kind of and then we're going to you know i'll talk a little bit about you touch a little bit on you and then we're going to have a look at your third house your 11th house uh, and I think that's all we're going to do yeah that's all we're doing third and 11th house so with the third house here we've got third house we've got younger siblings here we've also got teammates peers at your level okay of your age uh, we've also got friends definitely hobbies socializing any of that that's all happening there in the third house now when we take a look at the 11th house we've got older siblings and kind of you could say um, work contacts networking that kind of thing work contacts uh, networking happens in here because that's all about opportunities drawing in opportunities all that kind of thing we do also see friendship in the 11th house. It's a beautiful social house as well. So I'm gonna write socializing here as well. This is, yeah, that, well, I was just thinking about how an Aquarian is, is everyone's friend. So this is definitely, it's definitely a, a place of friendship as well. Yeah, I'll put friendship. All right, well, that's what we're going to have a look at for every single sign. So if you'd like to step into your sign, you are very welcome. So Aries, Aries, what do we have going on here? So you are lauded by, whoops, I'm making a mess. Okay. You are lauded by Mars. And this is a Mars that takes the lead. So I think when it comes to friendship, we'll have a look at your two houses. We've got here Gemini in the third, and we've got Aquarius in the 11th. So when I look at these two signs, I think your friends would be really grateful for your leadership. Okay, I think they'd be grateful for the fact that you take the lead, that you decide, okay, we're going here. Okay, you know, we're we're going to split the bill, we're doing it, we're, you organize things, you, you make it happen. Uh, maybe, you know, and especially if you've got a good Saturn, you might be good at timekeeping as well. 
and all that kind of thing. But I'd say that who your friends are, if you're looking for, okay, who are good friends for me? These are Gemini type of people. So I've got here witty friends, great conversationalists. Witty friends. You would enjoy great conversations. What else? And depends on where their Mars is. I was thinking about this. So if you've got Mars sort of here, casting fourth aspect onto Gemini, or if you've got Mars here or Mars here, um, you know, and, and depending as well, you want to know where Mercury is, but you could have friends that are really funny as well. These are people that are going to make you laugh. So we've got here funny, humor. So that's really nice there. Now, if we have a look at Aquarius, okay, so some of your friends might be individuals. They could be a bit aloof, hard to pin down. People you don't see too often as well. What else about Aquarius? But I would imagine like very trustworthy and you can have a very long term uh, connection with an Aquarius, definitely long, long standing friendship with them. But yeah, if I was able to see your chart and if I was able to see like where the lords of these houses are sitting and how they interact and things like that. You know, for example, if you have um, Venus in the third there, well, you could meet your partner through friends or through hobbies or through groups where you, you hang out with people and have fun kind of thing so we can see where you'd meet your partner there's you know if I could see more of your chart I could say more but for now I do think Aries that as a friend what the value that you bring is that you take the lead which is great people would love you for that and I think you do attract very witty friends great conversationalists I'd imagine there's a lot of fun and humor in your relationships. And equally on the Aquarian side of things, uh, I think, yeah, those, those could be, you know, people you don't see all the time. But they'd be strong individuals like you. They'd be very unique like you. You would have that in common there uh, with the Aquarius. Well, Aries, thank you so much for stopping by. We are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. So you are lauded by Venus. And for that, I've got here, yeah, good times, good food. Good times, good food. Going out hitting the town, doing all that kind of thing. I could imagine that would be a lot of fun for you, Taurus. I'd imagine you'd like, you'd really enjoy eating out too, possibly. But when it comes to your friends, what about these friends of yours? So you've got Cancer here and you've got Pisces here. So your friends, the Cancerian ones especially, they are homebodies. I could imagine that, you know, um, homebodies, maybe to get them out is difficult. Uh, or when you meet with them, it's one of you going to the other's house. That kind of thing is quite possible. I could also imagine you might have a lot of female friends. Or it doesn't matter if they're male or female, 
there's something nurturing about these people. There's something mothering about these people. So we've got here nurturing or mothering. These people could be compassionate. They could be emotional. And I think it would be pretty easy to open up to these friends uh, as well. I've got here shadow side, they could be clingy or needy. That is a possibility. Uh, I haven't explored the shadow for too many other signs, but shadow side. Clingy or needy, it's a possibility. When we take a look at your 11th house, these people definitely feel like soul tribe connections. Uh, these are your spiritual friends right here. Spiritual friends, soul tribe. These are people that you might meet while you are on a spiritual retreat in a foreign country. Okay, so foreign travel will bring friends for you. Travel brings friends. or will help you build your, your tribe of people. Also with these people, you're probably not gonna talk about anything trivial. You're gonna talk about the big stuff. Okay, so these are not trivial people. Uh, I'll just put here not trivial. And there's definitely a connection in relation to um, your spiritual sides. That would match up really well. Taurus, thanks so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. So you guys are the mercurial ones, Mercury. And you are social, chatty, and indecisive. Now for that, I really want to see where your moon is and your Mercury. I'd want to see those two in particular to determine how indecisive you are. But I'll just say you might be a little bit indecisive <laughs> with this Lord um, as the Ascendant here. We're going to take a look at your friends. So you've got Leo here and you've got Aries. So your friends are super cool and they're brilliant for you because they'll take the decisions. <laughs> You know, you might not be the one making the decisions, but your Leo friends, your, well, your Aries friends are definitely, these are taking the lead. They'll take the lead. Um, Leo, what are Leo? Leo, well, your Leo friends are very creative. And these are fiery friends, what you've got. So you've got fiery friends. So they would enjoy a good debate. They would enjoy, you know, um, yeah, sort of, I'm getting the words, sort of robust, hearty conversation, something like that. You know, they, they get engaged and they want to chat about things. Let's have a look here. They're individuals and they're both leaders. Yeah, leadership qualities. Well, there's leadership here for sure in Leo. Creative, let's have a look. What do I have written here? I think what your friends love about you is your wit, your humor, you know, that you're social, chatty, possibly that you're lighthearted that, you know, um, it's easy for you to just, you know, like, and, and that's the thing because so we've got Mercury here and we've got a lot of fire. Yeah. You'll see when we get into some of the other signs, like there are people who are really deep. In fact, I would say Taurus, I probably should have said this in their, um, in their one that they would have some deep friends for sure but this you've got fiery people here so 
Yeah, this is also going out, having a good time, being seen, partying, all that kind of thing. Yeah, where the word party becomes a verb. Yeah, that's these people. Creativity, leadership. I've got here, they love your intellect and wit. You love how they have a strong sense of self. These are definitely characters with a strong sense of self. Yep. Um, yeah, partying, partying with a, whoops, <laughs> is a verb. <laughs> yeah, this is true. You might find that Aries, your Aries friends might have trouble talking about their emotions. Because this is Mars and this is Saturn's house. So yeah, might find uh, your friends have trouble revealing emotions. Whoops, not gonna fit, doesn't matter. <laughs> what else have we got? I think that's about it. Gemini but yeah I, I think you've got a good uh, friendship set up here people that you can really have a, have a good time with all right well thank you so much for joining we are now going to welcome cancer cancer welcome so you are lauded by the moon whoops oh that didn't go well let's start that again moon there we go. <laughs> so you are, well, you're very sensitive for a start. Oh yes, I've got written here, people come to your home. You are sensitive, but people, when it comes to socializing and the whole friend thing, yeah, people come to your home. You probably love that. And who are these people? Right, we've well got Virgo here and you've got Taurus. So Virgo in the third. These are friends that are very down to earth. They could be loners as well. It's a possibility. You could also experience competition and comparison. Now you could experience competition or comparison with friends, people your age, also with siblings. Maybe you're always being compared to your sibling or something along those lines. So we've got here competition and comparison. I've also got here that friendship might mm, remind you of childhood or you do actually keep childhood friends. Uh, keep childhood friends or very long held connections. What else do we have here? I think your friends are also um, hard working. Work is important to them. And well, with some of these friends, I'm also thinking, yeah, you could, uh, they might like material things. But one of you had actually said in one of these videos that you'd love me to do something on love languages or something like that. That could be a topic, we'll see. Uh, might like material things, that's a possibility. I'm trying to think what else. I 
also got here fitness or like you meet people at the gym as well with this Virgo thing here so like gym hobbies yeah meet people through hobbies but ultimately cancer I think what your friends would love about you is I think they would love your sensitivity your ability to be caring and nurturing I think um, and I'd imagine empathy as well maybe people feel like feel special or that they're the, that you're the only one when you know that could there could be a bit of that as well they feel like a one and only kind of when they're with you or something like that anyway cancer thank you so much for joining we are now going to welcome leo how are we doing on time we're okay leo look at that you're lauded by the sun and this makes you actually quite difficult to get close to you might not have thought i was going to say that you might you might have thought I th you might think I was going to say something else but uh, yeah I've got here people find it hard to get close to you people find it hard I knew someone who had son in the first house and We'd go out and we'd do things and like people would just like this person will turn up and people just light up. But yeah, this, this friend of mine was very difficult to get close to because how do you hug the sun? You can't, you get burnt. <laughs> the sun is actually lonely, uh, which isn't that incredible? You wouldn't think so. And it's Leo, the leader, the king. You know, there's only one person at the top. There's only ever one king you know there's only ever one CEO there's only when you're a leader there's just one of you and that's it so yeah there's a there's an inherent loneliness perhaps to Leo because of this because how do you get how do you get close to Leo it's hard but you've got these beautiful charming friends here so you've got Librans and you've got Gemini people so this is really very lovely uh, you've got, I've got here diplomatic and charming friends. These are people who can help you bring balance back to your life or there's something about them that you learn from them. You learn, wow, they're so balanced. Uh, you know, I could do with being a bit like that. Uh, so these are people who are a good influence on you, definitely. I think one of the things that your friends would love about you, we've got Gemini here, so these people could be a bit indecisive. Your friends would love you for your leadership qualities, for the fact that you say, okay, we're going to go here, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, let's go, you know, they would like that. So that they can just be social and not think about those things. Yeah, I've got here, your friends go with your flow. Definitely, yep. The other thing is, I think you would like very much Friends who are really empathetic. Friends who are empathetic. I'd imagine you'd love that. I'd imagine one of the things that you'd really like about friendship is that feeling of being understood. That feeling of people get me. Um, I could imagine that that would be something that you'd really like. And I'd imagine you'd also love like great 
um, fun conversations here with these Geminians. Yeah. Well, Leo, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So you are lauded by Mercury. All right. And for you, yeah, I've got him. This is Mercury. This is a kind of, it's, it is a bit of a loner <laughs> archetype. Uh, I'm kind of thinking of Tarot and the Hermit there but I mean I think Virgo and Aquarius they these are probably the two loners in the zodiac if we're looking at this archetype and the friends thing and how does that work I think Virgo is yeah Virgo can be on their own Aquarius can be on their own you know uh, there's no sort of burning need for people or any of that um, let's have a look here so who are your friends? Who are the people that you're going to attract into your life? You're a bit of a loner, I've just said. Uh, and you've got these incredible people. So you've got Scorpios, and you've got Cancerians. You will attract deep friends. And your friends will be deep and meaningful. And your friends could quite possibly be even healing or um, transformative. You might transform the friend. The friend might transform you. Uh, so there's something alchemical or transformative about your relationships. Transformative. What else do we have? I didn't know I was going to say that. Yeah, deep, introspective and tuned in friends. Tuned in, I like that. Well, we can say here deep and introspective because that is the moon as well uh, and here we're going to have tuned in yeah and I mean if these people love you deeply there's probably no deeper love than, than what you'd get here so that's pretty cool but the problem is that they could be dependent so you could have friends who are dependent or addicted to you that's a possibility as well uh, dependent or addicted uh, to your supply your energy whatever your friends will love the occult you can share this stuff with them yeah I, I actually think that that is one of the coolest things about what you've got here Virgo that of, of all the different signs you can really share this spiritual stuff with them you'd be amazed I had a client session a live zoom session I think this was several weeks ago with one of you and you had said that um, your passion for astrology and all this stuff you can't talk to anyone else about that you, you just enjoy it by yourself because your friends would think you're crazy. So there are a lot of people out there like that. And I think, Virgo, of all the different setups, you're, you'll find people who are into the spiritual stuff you're into, that you should be able to find that. That shouldn't be hard for you. So I've got here people into the occult. Yeah, I think that's that. All right. Virgo, thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So we have got Venus here. And this Venus is very much about win-win outcomes. So of everybody, you've got a real talent for negotiation for or having friends you are the ultimate friend I think you and Aquarius really are the ultimate friends in the zodiac I think Gemini is pretty good too but maybe Gemini can be uh, a bit too superficial don't tell them I said that <laughs> but I am saying that here I think of the um, of the three airy uh, signs 
I do think you and Aquarius are the are the true friends. Yeah, very very loving and caring. You're good at win-win outcomes, figuring out win-win outcomes. You're also brilliant uh, at empathizing. You're gifted at that. So who are, who are your friends? Who are these cool people that you will attract in your life? Well, your friends are fiery people. So they'd love debate. And your friends, interestingly, you could have quite a group of friends from university. Or higher education or any of that. These are people who might enjoy debate as well. So there's something about debate or, you know, conversation where you're chatting about stuff and everyone's very glued to whatever's being said. Um, yeah, I've also got here intellectual friends. So maybe when there's an intellectual uh, component to a discussion or something, that's when you really are interested or intrigued or you like that kind of thing. You like those kind of people. You like, um, yeah. I used to um, think this about, there were, there were a couple of friends of mine who, uh, yeah, they're, and they're both way, way smarter than me. They got way better grades and, you know, the things they, yeah, are doing in their life, it's kind of, um, they're very sort of intellectual, brainy people and I very much enjoy hanging out with them because it kind of feels like, um, I don't know, like you're like you're like you can all run at the same pace or something i don't know it just feels feels nice so maybe there's some some quality like that but it's not to say to, i like all kinds of different people because like these days i've been watching on youtube this lady who sews and like her life is just so simple and she's really simple and i just love her company you know so i uh, i have quite a wide variety of different things that I like. Um, let's see. But what have we got here? So friends from university. Also, definitely creative friends. Creative friends. Um, friends with leadership qualities. Leaders. You'd like that. They'd like you. You know, this, this just works. So, um, and unique people, creative people. And yeah, I've got here, honesty in friendships is essential. I do have that. Now that is particularly true for Capricorns and Aquarius and depending on their Saturn and Moon and a couple of other things. Well, I mean, look, for anybody, Saturn having some kind of connection with the Moon, honesty is going to be so important. Uh, and yeah, like people who don't have any Saturn Moon connection, well, honesty, they don't care too much about that. So they're probably not the right people uh, to be friends with. There could also be something about uh, noble people. And that's an interesting word here, but noble entrepreneurs. Um, when it comes to networking circles, you networking with people above you. So um, people above you will give you a break and that kind of thing. Yeah. Wow, really interesting, Libra. Thank you so much for joining. We are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So you have got Mars here. Now it's a little bit different to the Aries Mars. I think the Aries Mars, I said, takes the lead. You can certainly do that, Scorpio. You, you'd be, you've got Mars here, so you can take charge. You can take the lead. You can do all of that. But one of the things in the context specifically of friends is that you are most likely to hold on to your friends or you will hold on to connections or it'll be hard to let go of connections okay um, if you have Venus connected with the eighth house or Scorpio or any of that it's very hard to let go 
of an old flame or an old lover or things things like that that can be really hard um but holding on to friends that that is a thing that you will do sometimes that can be good for you uh, but equally sometimes that can be not a good thing uh, and, and it can mm, it just it just means that your growth is stalled is is what i would say there so if you can let go of old friends old connections that that is going to be a good thing for you now your friendship scene is kind of interesting you've got powerful people who can be your friends okay powerful hard-working industrious people now this is quite interesting because you're you've got this whole occult thing going on here and the other thing is that you might also experience stop starts in life um, periods where you're not working where you're not engaged uh, with these you know kind of industrious hard-working people what we've got here Capricorn and Virgo so this is quite interesting when I was looking at this I actually have a remedy for your sign uh, when it comes to friendships but we'll get into that in a moment I'll just explain who I see these people as now if you're working and if you are and there are a lot of um, Scorpios and, and my Scorpio clients who you know they're in powerful positions in finance or they're at the top of this or at the top of that or you know we've got Indra king of kings coming out of here and there's a lot of amazing things so Scorpio can very much have these powerful industrious successful friends right so um yeah I've got here your circle is full of powerful people some of you will be like I don't relate to this at all but I'll I'm gonna get there uh, so I've got here powerful people. Yeah, I've got here ambitious friends, friends who want to improve their lives. So ambitious. Friends who are on like a continuous growth kind of a path um, because actually yeah this is quite upachaya right here you've got an, a double upachaya type thing here because upachaya is three six ten and eleven uh, so it is continuous self-improvement i'll put here now if you're let's say you're a light worker and you are not relating to this at all um what I would say and I've got a remedy here which I had on my previous slide I did a previous slide I've got some notes in front of me but um, I would say your remedy is be on the spiritual path to meet more like-minded people Okay, because what you might find is if you're particularly on your light worker or occult path or, or any of that, it's like, well, how, you know, how are you going to be meeting and hanging out with these Capricorn and Virgo and types? It's kind of, that might be harder to come by. So if you are on your spiritual path, now we're looking at houses 12 and 8 here. That's what I was looking at anyway. And I was seeing... Libra and Gemini so I think you'll have that they, these are friendly for you and I think well maybe more so Libra I know because Mars and Mercury they don't particularly get on but see Mars and Mercury it can give rise to humor so yeah I will be exploring all of these things in depth in my astrology classes which I do on Patreon so don't you worry I will go in depth there but when I was looking at this today just for the purposes of this little video here I uh, in my brainstorming out loud type video style um, yeah I've got here be on the spiritual path to meet more like-minded people 
well, a Gemini is a, is a natural friend archetype. So too is the um, the Libra, and so and I think you'll meet them when you're on your spiritual path. When you're in work and career mode, then you will collect friends. You will you'll collect friends through work. Um, so meet meet friends through work but the thing about Scorpio is they're not always working all the time so that's why I started to think a bit broader for you guys and just think okay well where are these friendly people for when life is very quiet for you and it's it's just a matter of applying yourself on the spiritual path, really doing your spiritual path, uh, that that will bring you more like like-minded people. But definitely, if when you're working, the other thing is that your friends could bring you work as well. Okay, so networking is very important for you to get work. Uh, if you want to get work, so friends bring work. I've had that actually. I'm, I don't even have too much Scorpio, but I've had I've had friends sort of call me up and say, "Hey, can you come and do this?" And yeah, I've I've had some of that. Well, Scorpio, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Hello, Sagittarius. What have you got going on? So you've got Jupiter here. You are adventurous. And you're natural academic as well. Okay, so I'll just put here and academic. And these are some of the qualities that people will really like about you. People will like that you're adventurous. People would like uh, that you know you're you're intellectual or academic. They'd like that you seek the truth, that that matters to you. I'll tell you who's going to love that a lot. These Aquarians right here. They're going to love that. And Librans as well. But your Aquarius people. Yeah, I've got here. They love that you seek the truth. Yes, and I've also got that these, these friends could be like therapists to you. Um, so you, you might have some friends who are like therapists. Friends who are like therapists. People who empathize. Your friends have great empathy. You would like that. Friends. These are balanced people as well. And I think that's something that you might like from a, a Libran here. Depending on what you've got going on in your chart, if you've got anything extreme happening, then it's good for you to have some of these Libran type of friends. So when I say like Libran type of friends, I don't necessarily mean that they have to have some significant Libra specifically in their chart. They could have a lot of seventh house in their chart. Uh, so yeah, sometimes how we judge, you know, these things, it's uh, not obvious. The other thing as well, I think that you would appreciate about what good friends bring into your life. Well, the, the Aquarians over here for a start, they are individuals. And I could imagine that you'd appreciate that these people give you space. Okay, so I can imagine that you like friends who, yeah, these, these are people who are giving, they're giving you space, both of these. So I'll just put space on this side. Yeah, 
Interesting. Sagittarius, I could keep going. If I saw your chart and if I saw where all your planets are sat, I'd be able to speak with accuracy. <laughs> I'm just brainstorming out loud here and in a very general way. So thank you for joining. We are now going to welcome Capricorn. How are we doing on time? We are running out of time. Capricorn, what have we got going on here? Capricorn, you are lauded by Saturn. Oh, what kind of a friend is Saturn? Well, <laughs> I've got here meets not very often. Um, yeah, that is a possibility with either yourselves or with the Aquarians. You know, you don't need to meet someone every day. Uh, so I'll have here um, meets now and then. I was just over in Sagittarius saying that they probably like space and that's really interesting. So we just dipped our toe into the bigger collective energies and now everybody needs space from here on in. Okay, so all of you need space from here. So you guys definitely need space. Um, space I would imagine would be appreciated by you. What else do you like with these people? Oh, well, that, you know, you've got Pisceans here and I think you've got uh scorpio here so with the piscians you could definitely travel with your friends okay that would be a lot of fun um, you could also make friends while traveling so travel with friends spiritual retreats with friends trips any of that that would be great um, you'd also be interested in other cultures and you'd have friends from other cultures too i'd imagine that that would be something you'd love Yeah, and I've got here definitely deep friends, uh, deep and meaningful conversations. Nothing superficial there about the um, about the Scorpio type person. They they just yeah they get they get into stuff. Uh, spiritual retreats with friends. What else? Foreign cultures, I'll just put foreign cultures here. And I do think that you'd have, you can, you if you don't have, you can find friends who are into the occult. So you don't have to be lonely in your enjoyment of some occult thing, as a lot of my clients are. You know, they'll, they'll tell me, hey, I'm into astrology, but I can't really talk about that with anyone I know. So you, Capricorn, can actually find people who would be into the occult and you can talk freely about all these kind of things. Well, thank you so much for joining Capricorn. We are now going to welcome Aquarius. How are we doing on time? We're doing okay. Aquarius, what have you got going on? All right, you are a Saturn Ascendant. Just like uh, next door we had Capricorn. You might just want to listen if you want to have a look at how their Saturn works. But for you, I've just got the word here, aloof. <laughs> you might be aloof. People might not uh, connect with you straight away or be able to figure you out straight away. Friends that are good for you are fiery individuals. Look at that. Leaders and intellectuals so we've got the leaders over here we've got the intellectuals over here <laughs> and what else do we have do you know i think i think your friends are individuals just like you so you're all very individual individuals Everybody's unique. That could be quite a feature of your friends. It's like maybe, you know, some, sometimes people, they've got, like with all their friend group, everybody is the same. I remember when I was at high school, this is reminding me of high school, and when I was at high school and they had these different groups, they had like the hairspray group and they had the cool kids and they had the nerds and they had the, you know, whatevers and they had the like, yeah, and I never belonged to like one group, but I remember like all the hairspray girls, they all looked the same. They all had the same thing going on and it was just, and they all looked the same. Whereas I feel like with your friends, Aquarius, it's like everybody is a one-off, unique 
person. It's probably no two the same. And now depending on Saturn and Moon and how that's working out for you, you're really going to require honest friends. That's going to be really important to you. And I'm going to put that here. You could also attract, oh, that's a, okay, no, I'm going to go for humor here as opposed to, but, okay, no, I'm going to, not going to write that down. Uh, but honesty, I'm sort of seeing where is honesty. I mean, look, it depends. I'd want, I'd want to see Saturn and Moon. Okay, these are the two things. And if there's any relationship between these two, uh, honesty becomes really important. The same for um, Capricorn as well, very much. I think the, the, when you're a Saturnian, or if you're a Cancer and you've got you know Saturn placed in a certain way, but yeah, there, there are some signs where honesty is going to be particularly a, a, a big thing. Um, now, yeah, and you're going to want that. Look at that. you got these people here who seek the truth. Uh, so Sagittarians are very much about the truth. You seek truth. You seek truth. And your friends do as well. Yeah, on a quest for the truth. Hmm. That would be important. Everyone's unique. Because you're very unique as well, Aquarius. We could also have the word rebel here. Yeah. Yeah. You'd really get on with the Sagittarians, actually, because they don't want to be pigeonholed or boxed. I can't imagine Aries would want that either. Yeah, you've got a lot in common with the friends that you will naturally draw in. It's very good. But you might not see them all the time you're a bit like capricorn where it's like well you don't you don't see them every day kind of thing all right aquarius well thank you so much for joining we are now going to welcome pisces pisces welcome thank you so much for joining so you are lauded by jupiter all right what kind of jupiterian are you yes i've got here big picture thinker That is you. And I tell you, I've loved your comments, guys, on these videos when I make them because I often read those and it helps me learn deeper and I get to hear straight from like the horse's mouth, straight from you, like what, how this stuff really works. And I think in one of the episodes when I talked about Pisces and their ability to philosophize and intellectualize and the big picture thinking you've got going on. So many of you in the comments below said, oh, yes, that is us. That is who we are. And that is absolutely who you are. And, you know, I mean, it's quite interesting because in your friendship scene, I'm sort of looking at this now going, hmm, it might be hard for you to find friends um, who are just as big a big picture thinker as you because you've got these uh, Artha, you've got this uh, Taurus and Capricorn here. So it might actually, you might feel it with your friendship circle. Uh, it might not be so easy to find people who, who play at your level or who philosophize in the same way or who think the great big grand thoughts that you do. This is quite interesting. I'm just sort of seeing that now. I'll have a look at my um, notes here. I mean, you, you do have Taurians here, so you do have loyal rock solid supportive friends okay so very loyal rock solid friends okay these could also be friends from childhood as well it's a possibility or you've kept very long-term friends but also this is a mercurial house so it doesn't have to be um you might meet friends through work and this is reminding me of when I was working in advertising and I was part of this thing called the crazy crew like we were just nuts there was just uh, a, a 
sort of division of the creative department where we had this little gang and we called it the crazy crew and we used to um we had some really great graphic designers in there and they would like take our faces and put it on you know different bodies and just just the maddest stuff and like we put posters around the agency and in the lift and try to embarrass each other and yeah it was a lot of fun so I've definitely had a lot of fun with work people you might get work through your friends so you might meet friends through work equally you might whoops you might get work through friends right so you might get work through friends But equally, it might be that um, now, where, where, how are you going to find some fellow big picture thinkers or people that you feel are more suitable? And I'm actually going to give you a bit of a remedy, as I did for Scorpio, and I'm going to say, be on your spiritual path to meet more like-minded people. Uh, yeah, remedy be on your spiritual path. And that's where you're going to find the people who appreciate the, um, the big picture thinker in you. It might, you, you, you Taurians might not, I don't, they might not, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, what about the Capricorns? I mean, they might though. Capricorns are big picture thinkers as well if they've got a strong Saturn and you know that that's a big collective energy so I tell you I mean it might be your Capricorn people where uh, and might be friends that are older than you okay so maybe you need to have friends that are older than you that's going to be good for you equally if you're on your spiritual path you're going to meet the more like-minded people on that path so that is going to be good for you there well Pisces and anybody who's watched the whole video I want to thank you so much I'm going to turn this off I want to thank you so much for tuning in I have very much enjoyed doing this video I just want to make sure it's definitely saving that because if it doesn't save that it's a nightmare um, but yeah thanks so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next time.